after snapping their three-game skid and getting back into the win column with their fifth W of the 2020 summer. The Steamers look to pick up some more momentum before heading on the road for the first time this season tomorrow night. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, and baseball fans alike. I'm Patrick Foster. Welcome back to Historic Hicks Field on this beautiful Sunday evening here in Edenton, North Carolina for yet another edition of Steamers Baseball on the Edenton Steamers YouTube Network. Tonight, the Fighting Clams welcome the Old Dominion hitters back in Historic Hicks Field for the team's third meeting of the 2020 summer. The hometown Clams come in with the best record in the TSL at 5-3 after snapping their three-game losing streak back on Friday night with their first walk-off victory of the summer with a 5-4 finish in the bottom of the ninth against Greenbrier on firework and military appreciation night here at Historic Hicks Field. As for Old Dominion, they look to move above into first place tonight after picking up their fourth win of the season on Friday with a 5-2 win over Tidewater that saw the hitters score three runs in the bottom of the sixth inning to secure the win. Old Dominion comes into tonight with a 4-3 record. A win tonight would move them into first place in the TSL and push the Steamers back in the standings by half a game. Before we get into tonight's action, though, let's take a look at Edenton's previous contest, a 5-4 victory over the Greenbrier Knights back on June, or excuse me, back on July 3rd. It snapped a three-game losing streak that began with a loss to Greenbrier back on the 27th with Edenton's first loss of the season. Their record moved to 5-3 and three now after the win in both overall and at-home categories and here on their home field as they have yet to play a road contest. It was a pitcher's duel through the first half of the contest as the home faithful here at Historic Hicks went four and a half innings without seeing a run for either side come across the plate. Edenton finally opened up the scoring when Brody Rubenstein lined his first home run of 2020 over the center field wall with Alan Brown standing on second base. Greenbrier quickly answered the call, however, with a pair of bases loaded ground outs from catcher Ty Hanchi and left fielder Bo Gonzalez for just the first two outs of the inning to tie up the game at 2-2. Edenton starter Colin Criminger would finish out the sixth inning by striking out designated hitter Rylan Brown. Criminger had an impressive day throwing for six full innings, allowing just two earned runs on four hits, no walks, and five strikeouts. He did hit two batters, though. Edenton quickly retook the lead in the bottom of the sixth, posting another two runs to bring the score to 4-2. to two. Aaron Copeland reached on an error that scored Alan Alonzo to bring the first run of the inning in. Tyler McPeak then brought in his fifth RBI this year with a sacrifice fly to left field with the bases loaded, scoring Josiah Seitler from third base. Both sides were held without a run until the top of the ninth inning following the bottom of the sixth when Greenbrier left fielder Bo Gonzalez brought in his second and third RBIs of the night with a no-out rocket to center field off of steamer relief pitcher Kyle Reynolds. That would be the end of Greenbrier's top of the ninth offensive output, which meant nine full innings here at Historic Hicks. Brody Rubenstein opened up with a leadoff walk against Night pitcher Dalton Barham. Danny Padilla then came out of the bullpen with second baseman Jared Kaufman up at the plate and Houston Wright waiting on deck. After evening, after evening the count up one and one, Kaufman bounced a ground ball slowly to shortstop as Rubenstein took off on a hit on a hit and run situation. Excuse me. Shortstop Trent Hanchy rushed the play at short and committed a throwing error over to first base. Steamer skipper Marshall McDonald, also coaching third that night, aggressively sent Rubenstein towards home. Luckily for Edenton, the throw home from Shane McCarthy at first was far too high for Greenbrier catcher Sebastian Silva to come down with, and Rubenstein scored without a play at the plate. It was the first walk-off win for Edenton and a fitting way to end the night, too, with fireworks set off after the game in celebration of Independence Day. Edenton saw three pitchers take the bump out of the bullpen, including Jake Rice, Ryan Kutz, and Kyle Reynolds, who picked up the win for the Clams. Including Colin Criminger, Steamer's pitcher struck out 11 Greenbrier batters and allowed zero walks on bases on balls. As the staff, they did, however, hit for opposing Greenbrier batters. Edenton was out hit in the contest 5-7 to seven despite the victory. Josiah Seitler led the way for Edenton in hits with a single and a double. That does it for our recap on the last contest between the Edenton Steamers and Greenbrier Knights. Back on Friday, July 3rd. It was a 5-4 victory for your Edenton Steamers. Only a few moments away from the start of tonight's contest. We're going to take a quick break, though, but when we come back, we have starting lineups and our nation's colors. I'm Patrick Foster. You're listening to Edenton Steamers Baseball, only on the Edenton Steamers YouTube network.
fan signed. That's a good week for us. Time to meet the guys who are the touring back the 2020 Eaton Tech Steamers. Center fielder number 10, Joey Rubenstein. Second base number 5, Gerald Kaufman. Left field number 22, Houston Ryan. First base, number 13, Shane Easter. Back at historic Hicks Field as the starting lineups for the Edenton Steamers are announced and they take the field prior to tonight's national anthem. Before we get to our nation's colors though, let's talk about the last contest between the Edenton Steamers and Old Dominion hitters. It was a 14 to eight finish back on Tuesday, June 3rd. It was the second loss for Edenton. It evened up the season series between Old Dominion and Edenton at 1-1. Edenton won the first contest 10 to three back on June 25th. There were 12 hits for Edenton with combined three home runs. One from Alan Alonzo, one from Alan Brown, and one from Shane Easter. They were out hit by Old Dominion by just one, 12 to 13. We'll continue talking about the previous contest between these two teams, but first we go to our public address announcer here at Historic Hicks Field, Tommy Bass, with our nation's colors. Read the latest issue of the Daily Advance or visit dailyadvance.com. We ask that this time if you will please stand, gentlemen, and remove your hats for the singing of the national anthem. Tonight's anthem being sung by Ray Omer. Cut it off about halfway through, so let's take it from the top, why don't we? Last time these two teams met up, back on Tuesday, June 30th, it was a 14-8 finish in favor of the Old Dominion hitters. It was the second loss for Edenton and evened up the season series at one win apiece, with Edenton winning the first matchup between the two back on the 25th of June, 10-3. There were a combined 12 hits for the Edenton Steamers with three home runs, one coming from Alan Alonzo, one from Alan Brown, and one from Shane Easter as well. However, the Steamers were out hit in the contest only by one, despite looking at the 14 to eight score differential. It was a one run game heading into the ninth inning, nine to eight in favor of Old Dominion before they scored five runs to really run away with the contest in the top of the ninth. Edenton was unable to score any runs in the bottom of the ninth. Josiah Seitler was the starter for Edenton. He threw for four innings, allowed two earned runs to cross the plate, the only two runs to come across on Seitler's watch. On two hits, three walks, and striking out five batters along the way. Pedro Orta was the starter for Old Dominion. He threw for one and one third of an inning, allowing four earned runs to cross on four hits, no walks, and a strikeout. Aaron Copeland took the loss for Edenton, his first loss of the season. He threw for one and two thirds innings, allowed two earned runs to come across and score. On one hit, three walks, and two strikeouts as well. Andrew Melnick earned the dub for Old Dominion, throwing for two and two thirds innings himself, allowing two earned runs on five hits, no walks and five strikeouts. The starter, starter, excuse me, for your Edenton Steamers tonight, Trevor Kirk, the rising sophomore at Elon University at North Raleigh Christian High School. He's made two appearances in the entire season thus far, only one in league play. And it was a start against Old Dominion back on the 25th. 
He threw for four total innings, allowing two earned runs on four hits, one walk, and nine strikeouts. The first batter he'll face for Old Dominion, the leadoff man. For your hitters, Zach Morris, tonight's shortstop out of Virginia Military Institute. First pitch on the way from Kirk, taken inside, maybe a bit low as well. 1-0 the count against Zach Morris. Morris did not play in Old Dominion's win yesterday, a 5-2 victory over Tidewater at home. Second pitch taken for ball two. Morris comes in with a 286 batting average on the year as a 2-0, a fastball high inside. So quickly the count in Morris's favor, 3-0. Morris is one for four this season against Edenton in his only appearance against the Steamers, one for four day back on the 30th. The 3-0 on its way. Fastball, maybe a bit higher in the upper part of the zone and a bit inside, but still called strike one. Kirk with the 3-1. Low and a bit outside. So Kirk opens up the contest with a walk to Zach Morris, who ends up at first base as the first base runner for Old Dominion tonight. And now Austin Elledge, the second baseman, batting in the two hole. We'll dig in for his first plate appearance tonight. One runner on, no outs. The runner on the move from first, swinging misses Elledge. The throw down is not in time as Zach Morris picks up a stolen base and eliminates the double play up possibility for the Steamers. Elledge behind in the count 0-1 following the swing and miss. Kirk checks on the runner at second. A healthy lead as Elledge takes the second pitch, a breaking ball this time for a called strike two on the lower outside part of the zone. Elledge was 0 for 3 back on Friday against Tidewater in the 5 to 2 victory. He walked once and struck out twice in the contest. The 0 2 on its way from Kirk. Half hearted swing attempt, and he comes up empty for a swinging strike three. So the first out recorded for the Steamers D. Here in the top of the first inning, one out with a runner standing on second in Zach Morris. He walked to open up the contest. And now Zach Wojnarowski will dig in. Wojnarowski starting in right field tonight. First pitch to Wojnarowski, a breaking ball, a slow one at that, that just caught the lower outside part of the zone for a called strike one. Wojnarowski comes into tonight with a 440 average at the plate. Top five in the league in that category. Time called at the plate. And Wojnarowski comes in with a 400 average. Four for 10 against Steamers pitchers. The 0 one swung on in line right back to Kirk at the mound. Nice reaction in time to record the out on the line drive, the throw back over to second to try and pick off Morris is a tough one that pulls Hare off the bag as he tried to recover and cover second. Recover and cover. <laughs> so only one out recorded on the line drive back to Kirk on the mound, but two outs in the inning for Old Dominion. And that brings up the cleanup hitter, Alberto Sanchez, who's already gotten comfortable in that right-handed hitter's box here at Historic Hicks. He's got two homers here in Edenton through two contests against the Steamers. First pitch to Sanchez is taken for ball one. The 1 0 taken low for ball one, or ball two. So the count moves to 2 0. Sanchez 0 for 3 last night against Tidewater, but still comes into today with a 393 average at the plate. 
and a slugging percentage, percentage of 750 with seven singles, a double, and three home runs. 2-0 taken for ball three. A breaking ball there from Kirk that wound up too high and inside. The 3-0 from Kirk is taken low and outside for ball four. Maybe not a terrible decision as Sanchez is five for nine prior to that plate appearance against Steamers pitching. And now Hunter Cole, the first baseman, will dig in for the first time tonight with two on and two out with run and one in scoring position and Zach Morris standing on second. First pitch to Cole in the opening AB for his night at the plate is just a bit low and away for ball one. Cole was two for five against Edenton in the 14 to eight win for Old Dominion. One single and one double off the bat of Cole in the contest. The 1-0 is flown out to short left field. It's gonna bounce in front of Houston right. Morris is coming around third and he'll score as the throw from right and left field is not in time. So book it as an RBI single for Hunter Cole in his first at bat. Not a great sounding hit, is it? Definitely wound up splitting that wood. Now Jerry Hammond's the third baseman. We'll dig in for his inaugural plate appearance tonight. Hammond's the sophomore out of Walters State Community College. First pitch to Hammond's is a breaking ball taken middle away, but called strike one. Kirk will step off and regain his composure. Hammond's comes into the night with an average. I'm sure he's looking to increase 188 at the plate and 16 at bats. Second pitch taken for ball one. Against Edenton back on the 30th, Hammonds went two for three in five total plate appearances with a single and one double. Similar to his teammate Hunter Cole who stands on first. 1-1 one, one fouled off hard down the first base line, but foul as it rattles up against the cage of the visitor's bullpen and right. The one, two. Ball low. Looked like maybe a fastball there from Kirk. Count even now at two balls and two strikes with two outs and two on. The 2-2, two -two, swung on and missed. Kermode, the catcher, in his first start tonight, hold, held on to the third strike. So it's a swinging strikeout for the third and final out of the inning. One run comes across on one hit, no errors on part of the Edenton Steamers and two runners left on for Old Dominion. Top of the order due up. For Edenton in the bottom of the first inning, I'm Patrick Foster. You're listening to Edenton Steamers Baseball, only on the Edenton Steamers YouTube network. Biden Health is your hometown health care provider. 
With eight community hospitals across North, across Eastern North Carolina, Vidant is happy to serve you for any of your health care needs. Vidant also offers numerous wellness center facilities which allow for exercise rehabilitation activities. Be sure to visit your local Vidant centers in Edenton or Windsor and hit a home run with your health care provider today. On the mound tonight for your Old Dominion hitters following the one run offensive output in the top of the first off the RBI single from Hunter Cole. It's Philip Forbes. Forbes comes in with three games under his belt on the mound. Two of them starts, so his third start here tonight. He's collected six and two-thirds innings of work to start 2020, at least the summer of 2020. And he opens up against Brody Rubenstein, the leadoff hitter for the Edenton Steamers, who came across to score as the winning run in the bottom of the ninth in Edenton's 5-4 walk-off victory over Greenbrier on Friday. Rubenstein also went yard for the first time this season with a two-run shot to center field to open up the scoring in the bottom of the fifth inning for both sides. Rubenstein fouls off the 1-1. So the count now 1-2 and two to the steamer Rubenstein. One ball, two strikes. The pitch from Forbes, swung on and lined hard. Takes a hop in front of the second baseman, Elledge, who originally drops it out of his glove, but doesn't move too far. So all he has to do is take a couple steps over, pick it up off the outfield grass, and make the throw over to Hunter Cole in time for the first out. So Rubenstein goes 0 for 1 to start today. And Jared Kaufman, who brought home Rubenstein with a ground ball to short that resulted in a throwing error over to first. And thus ensued chaos, leading to the steamer's score. Digs in for his first time today. First pitch to Kaufman, a breaking ball that dropped off about a foot above the zone, catching the upper part of it for strike one. The 0 1 to Kaufman now. Another breaking ball. This one doesn't break enough as it starts above and stays above. Count now 1 and 1. The 1-1, one, one. half swing there from, excuse me, a check swing from Coffin, as he did not break the plane. The pitch swung on and popped up in the air down the first base line. Cole looking like he has a read on it. He does, drifts over into foul territory and makes the catch for the second out. So Kaufman starts 0 for 1 today as well. And Houston Wright, whose seven game hitting streak came, came to an end against Greenbrier, looks to get that hot stick going again as he went hitless in the contest. Now with two outs and no one on, Wright looking to come up with some early offense for the Steamers. They trail 1-0 following the top of the first. First pitch to right, fastball, just a bit outside, ball one. Second pitch swung on and lined into the net behind home plate towards the steamer dugout. As right was behind the fastball that time, so the count one ball and one strike to the left fielder. The 1-1 one, one now, taking the ball two. We'll go around the infield now for the hitters. Forbes, the redshirt freshman at JMU on the mound. JT Inskeep, the freshman at Virginia Military Institute behind the plate. The 1-1 one, one to right, taken for ball two. Hunter Cole, the freshman at Virginia Military Institute at first. Austin Elledge, the redshirt junior at St. Andrews at second. Zach Morris, the freshman at VMI at shortstop. And Jerry Hammonds at Walter State Community College at third. Swing and a foul tip into the catcher's mitt, but he drops it, but still a strike as it was a 2-1 count, now 2-2 to Houston Wright. 
Outfield left to right, Alex Gulasano, the rising freshman at Eastern Mennonite University in left. Dylan Cup, the right, rising freshman at Virginia Wesleyan in center. And Zachary Wojnarowski, the freshman at Thomas Nelson Community College in right. Called strike three, taken on the lower outside part of the plate by Houston Wright. So the steamers go one, two, three in the bottom of the first. Seven, eight, nine coming up for the hitters offense. No runners left on, no hits, no runs for the steamers and no errors on part of Old Dominion in the bottom of the first inning. They lead one nothing as we start the top of the second frame. I'm Patrick Foster. You're listening to Edenton Steamers Baseball only on the Edenton Steamers YouTube network. One, two, three, go the steamers in the bottom of the first. We open up the top of the second here at Historic Hicksfield with the hitters up by one. They scored an RBI single from Hunter Cole with our man on first and second in the top of the first inning. Due up now for Old Dominion. 7, 8, 9, JT Inskeep in the seven hole, the catcher. At a VMI, will lead off in the inning. First pitch to Inskeep, swung on and missed as Kirk starts the second inning of work on the mound with a swinging strike. Inskeep, a catcher and a pitcher for this Old Dominion roster as he gets hit on the second pitch of the at bat. Just barely clips that oblique on the left side of his body. And now Alex Gulasano, the left fielder, will dig in. Gulasano coming in with an average below 200 at 154 and 15 official at bats. The throw over is not in time. Excuse me. It was 15 plate appearances, 13 total at-bats for Alex Gulasano coming into tonight. First pitch to Gulasano. Big swing and a miss there. As that slider broke really nicely across the zone. That one went about 10 to 3 o'clock. Another pickoff move from Kirk. It's not in time. Ince keeps sliding in safely. Gulasano went two for five against Edenton back on the 30th in the 14 to eight hitter victory. Picked up two singles in the contest. Called strike two to Gulasano at the plate. In his first appearance against Edenton, Gulasano went 0 for 3 with three strikeouts as he picked up the hat, tri hat trick at the plate in the contest. Another pickoff move from Kirk it is not in time. Olé, 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 olé. Gulasano. Awaits the 0-2 from Kirk, now on its way, taken for a called strike three. Another nice breaking ball there from Kirk that broke right at the last second. Started inside at the hip of Gulasana before dropping off right into the heart of the zone. Now Dylan Cup, the center fielder and nine-hole hitter, taking his first cuts today. 
pickoff move from Kirk to first again. It's not a in time. Take you around the defense now for the Inton Steamers. Trevor Kirk, the rising sophomore out of Elon on the mound. Case Kermode in his first start at a University of Mount Olive behind the plate for the Steamers. Another throw over to Shane Easter at first out of Eastern Michigan. His college teammate Jared Kaufman out of Eastern Michigan over at second. Casey Hare headed to Milligan University over at shortstop and Aaron Copeland, the pioneer after out of Spartanburg Methodist at the hot corner at third. Swing and a miss to open up the AB from Dylan Cup. So he's down to the count, 0 oh, and 1. Outfield left to right, Houston right, Brody Rubenstein and Jackson Hitt back in the lineup today out in right field for the Steamers. Nice second pitch from Kirk. Puts Cup behind in the count, 0 oh, and 2. This is Cup's first appearance against the Steamers this season. Fastball high and inside at the hands. Taken for ball one. The one two swung on and fouled off, so the count remains at one ball and two strikes. Up with a 444 average with four hits and nine at bats. The 1 2 on its way to cup. Taken low. Looked like maybe a splitter there. Didn't think Kirk had that in his arsenal, but it dropped off the table pretty late. Two 2 from Kirk. Cup wanted to go around, but wisely held up as that pitch is called ball three. Maybe an inch or two too far above the zone. It's now a full count with just one out and a runner standing on first. Kirk with the three two. Take it for ball four. It's now two on with runners on first and second. And Zach Morris, the leadoff hitter in the lineup for Old Dominion, digging back in. Kirk looking to pick up. Out number two, as Morris shows bunt on the first pitch from Kirk, but pulls back in time. As the first pitch is taken for ball one. Morris drew a walk in his first plate appearance. Second pitch. Breaking ball that was just a bit too far low and outside. As the count moves to two balls and no strikes in favor of Morris. The 2 0. Swung on. That one's lined. It's going to fall into center field in front of Brody Rubenstein. Head coach Alan Elledge over there at third base is going to hold JT Inskeep at third. So the bases are loaded with only one away, and Austin Elledge, the second baseman, digs in for the second time tonight. He struck out swinging against Kirk for the first out of the top of the first. Elledge yet to pick up a extra base hit this year. He's got three singles. He does have one home run. Misread my chart there. So three singles and one home run for four hits in 14 at-bats. So he takes the first pitch for ball one. Pitching coach Connor Daly making his first trip out, of the mound, out to the mound tonight. So I'm sure they would have liked for Kirk to hold it together a little bit longer. These conversations tend to be pretty quick between Daly and whoever's on the mound. Doesn't come out with too much to say. The 
as that one will end briefly as well. The umpire behind home doesn't even have to make a move towards the mound. So two runners on and still one out. Make it bases loaded. Couldn't see the runner on third because one of my charts here hanging on a window. Elledge skies the 1-0 up in the air into right field. Jackson Hip coming in, making the play. The runner's going to come home from third, but he's going to backtrack his way as Jackson Hip puts the arm strength on display. Inskeep would have been hosed had he even made an attempt, or a serious attempt at that towards home play. And a big second out recorded with the bases loaded. And Zach Wojnarowski up at the plate. Wojnarowski lined out right back to the pitcher's mound that is opening at bat. But Wojnarowski, another guy who's already found his groove here at Hicksfield, historic Hicksfield. First pitch to Wojnarowski in that bat is popped up. But will quickly drift foul behind the Old Dominion dugout and out of play. Wojnarowski, after that first at bat, four for 10 with a 400 average. Swing and miss strike two. It was actually four for 10 coming into tonight. So following the first at bat, four for 11 against Edenton pitchers. But now down in the count, 0-2 with the bases loaded and two outs. Kirk in his windup, kicks and deals. The 0-2 taken inside in the middle part of the zone for ball one. Home crowd showing their displeasure. One ball, two strikes, bases loaded, the pitch. About in the same spot as the last pitch. So the count evens up at two balls and two strikes. The 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and that one's lofted into shallow right field and it's gonna get down. Innskeep comes home from third, but they're gonna hold the runner up at third base coming in from second. So just one run scores on the play. And the lead increases to two for Old Dominion with the power bat of Alberto Sanchez digging in for his second time tonight. Sanchez walked in his first plate appearance on four straight balls. Sanchez will step out of the box. Sanchez, three of his home runs on the season, or two of those three coming here at Historic Hicks Field. As he fouls off the first pitch from Kirk to fall behind 0-1. Two hits in the inning already for Old Dominion. A one on its way to Sanchez with the bases loaded. Taken low and away, but called strike two. So Sanchez quickly behind in the count. No balls, two strikes. With two outs and the bases loaded. And one run already come across the plate for Old Dominion in the inning. Swinging strike three. Had him fooled there. Kirk escapes with just one run coming across in the top of the second on two hits. Three runners left on for Old Dominion and no errors on part of the Edenton Steamers. Heart of the order coming up, four, five, and six for the Edenton Steamers. We head now to the bottom of the second, Edenton trails by two. I'm Patrick Foster, you're listening to Edenton Steamers Baseball only on the Edenton Steamers YouTube Network.
first baseman Shane Easter in the cleanup spot tonight for Edenton to lead off here in the bottom of the second. Steamers have yet to bring a run, run across in the early innings of this contest. Looking to get going, though, as Old Dominion's already brought across two. Swinging at the first pitch is Easter. It's a routine ground ball over to the second baseman, Elledge. Fields it cleanly and makes the throw over to Cole in time at first for the first out. So one pitch, one out for the Steamers to start the bottom of the second. Josiah Seitler, the five-hole hitter and designated hitter for the Edenton Steamers, will dig in. Seitler two for four against Greenbrier in the five to four victory with a single and a double. Big cut at the first pitch of the A-B. Missed. So they count 0-1. Oh Seitler with a 429 batting average coming into tonight. The second highest on the Steamers ball club right behind Houston Wright who finds himself in the high fours after the hitless day against Greenbrier. Second pitch, a ball, so the 1-1 one, one on its way from Forbes. Cuts a little too far inside, low, and it actually hits the toes, it appears, of Josiah Seitler. Definitely made contact with him, and it looks like it was on the feet as he's shaking out that left foot over at first base. But so the first base runner on for Edenton tonight and Josiah Seitler following the hit by pitch, and Aaron Copeland digs in for the first time playing first base, third base for the Clams tonight. First pitch to Copeland, high and way inside. Just to lean back out of the way of that pitch. Count moves to 1-0. Copeland likes Seitler, who stands over on first, a player who will play in the field and get his share of at-bats this season for sure, but will also be used very frequently as a pitcher for this Steamers team. Swing at the second pitch, a hard ground ball to the third baseman, Hammonds. Throw over to second in time, but the throw over to first gets by the first baseman. Rattles back towards him in foul territory and a diving play to tag out Aaron Copeland is unsuccessful as Copeland scrambles out of the way and back to first. So as Copeland re reaches on a fielder's choice. And now Casey Hare in the seventh hole. Make his first appearance tonight with a runner on and now two away for Edenton in the bottom of the second. Hare went 0 for 2 against Greenbrier and comes into the nut tonight with a batting average and slugging percentage of 222. So he's got four singles on the year and no extra base hits and only one RBI on the season. First pitch to Hare of the at-bat is not going to matter as it's ruled a balk on Philip Forbes on the mound. But the double play ball never really an issue as there were already two outs with Copeland standing on first. He now stands on second following the balk. Edenton still looking for their first official hit in the contest. They trail 3-0 in the category to Old Dominion following an inning in two-thirds of play. First pitch to care is taken high and away for ball one. Hare's family actually in attendance today, coming, making the trip from Tennessee. The 1 0 to Hare, a bouncer in the dirt, taken for ball two. Against Old Dominion back on the 30th, Hare was one for four in five total playoff play appearances with just one single in the contest. He also walked. Takes the 2-0 for strike one. A low breaking ball that ended near the shins of Hare. But he's still ahead in the count, two balls and one strike despite the relatively questionable call. Runner on second, two outs. Forbes checking on the runner. And Hare calls time at the plate. And 
In fact, official timeout called. I'm not sure what he just picked up and put in his pocket. Perhaps a piece of wood that's been lying there since the Hunter Cole broken bat single back in the first inning, but I'm not entirely sure. I know that bat did break, and it looked like he might have picked up a piece of black and grain-colored wood. The 2-1 gets past the man at the plate, Inskeep, but he recovers in time and holds Copeland in check over there at second. An RBI opportunity for Casey Hare, who's just got one on the season. And it would be a big RBI as it would get the Steamers offense going. Still scoreless are the hometown clams. And a rip into right field. And that one's going to get down in no man's land and roll all the way up towards the wall. Hare rounding first, heading to second. The run from second. Copeland comes all the way in to score for the Steamers. First run of the game. And Hare picks up his first extra base hit of the season. An RBI double with two outs and two strikes facing him in the count. He delivers. Big at bat there from Casey Hare as he's the first hit recorded for the Edenton Steamers as well tonight. And now Case Kermode digs in for the first time tonight. And the dugout of the Edenton Steamers having a little fun with his walk-up song there, Bump and Grind. First pitch to Kermode, taken for strike one. Kermode, as I've mentioned, making his first start tonight for the Steamers. Has made two plate appearances already for Edenton. He's 0 for 2 on the year. Second pitch, a bouncer off the chest of Inskeep, but he keeps it in front of him, so Hare stays put over at second base. Kermode asked for Ghetto Symphony for his walk-up song. Couldn't find the clean version for it, so I went over and asked him any other songs, and he let some other teammates pick it for him. Eddie Shores was the one who selected Bump and Grind as Kermode takes the third pitch for ball two, so the count moves to two and one against the catcher out of the University of Mount Olive. The 2-1 now, taking high for ball three. It's the count in Kermode's favor. Three and one with the runner on second following the Casey Hare RBI double. The 3-1. Swung on and that one's lofted in the air towards deep right center field. That one's carrying back, 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 and goodbye baseball. Case Kermode gives the Steamers their first lead of the night on a two-run shot, his first of the season, to right center field. It's a 3-2 ball game here in the bottom of the second. Kermode with his first home run of the season in front of his parents in attendance here at Historic Kicks Field. A two-run blast to give the Steamers a one-run lead in the bottom of the second. Alan Elledge, the head coach, heading out to the mound to talk things over with his starter, Philip Forbes. And this Steamers crew, not one you want to start slipping up against. It's a lineup that boasts plenty of power bats from top to bottom. As you see Case Kermode in the eight spot, belting a two-run blast. And of course, still getting used to this lineup as this Head coach Marshall Mather still getting used to his newest addition, Case Kermode. So a good start for Case in the season. And maybe Bump and Grind was the right choice for his walk-up song. Maybe it gave him a little bit of extra juice. Jackson Hip in the nine hole with two outs and no runners on following the two-run blast. Hip still hitless as a steamer in 2020. Evens up the count at one ball and one strike. 1-1 one, one taken for a ball at the toes. So he has to scoot out of the way. So the count moves to two balls and one strike. 
Hip over six in the contest, or excuse me, in, on the season. As he swings and comes up empty. Fouls that one off. So the count moves to two balls and two strikes. In fact, three balls and two strikes. So full count pitch with two outs and the base is empty on, their, on its way to Jackson Hip. The pitch swung at and grounded slowly to the shortstop. That's Morris making the play and the throw over in time to retire the side. But not before serious damage is done by the Steamers here in the bottom of the second. They take the lead with three runs on two hits, including a Case Kermode two-run shot, his first of the season. No runners left on and no errors on part of the visiting Old Dominion hitters. Five, six, and seven do up in the top of the third inning for the Old Dominion hitters. I'm Patrick Foster. You're listening to Edenton Steamers Baseball only on the Edenton Steamers YouTube network. Hunter Cole to lead off for Greenbrier. Excuse me, Old Dominion. I'm stuck on Friday night. As his team faces a one-run deficit, it's three to two following the three-run bottom of the second from the Edenton Steamers. We saw Case Kermode go deep over the right center field wall for his first home run. Kermode takes the first three pitches for balls. Three zero taken for strike one as Cole was watching that. Three zero all the way in. Pops up the three one into. Right left left center field, a diving attempt from Rubenstein is not caught. Apologies for the delay on the call. That's going to be ruled as a hit as Rubenstein had to make the extra effort out there in center field. I'm not sure why Rubenstein was calling off Houston right and left, as that was more of a more of the left fielder's ball than it was the center fielder's, but regardless. Hunter Cole stands on second as the first base runner of the inning for Old Dominion. Jerry Hammonds, the man at the plate. Hammonds struck out swinging in his first plate appearance and takes the first pitch of this at-bat for a called strike one. I'm not sure why Houston Wright didn't call off Rubenstein over in center. It looks like they're still talking about the play now. The 0-1 on its way to Hammonds is bounced in front of home plate to the shortstop Hare. He makes the throw over to first in time for the first out. But Holt, meanwhile, Cole moves up from second to third. And JT Inskeep will dig in. Inskeep was hit by a pitch to open up the top of the second. Came around to score on the single from Hunter Cole to left field. Now Cole on third base with an opportunity to be brought in from Inskeep, a pop-up 
to shallow right field. It'll be Kaufman backing up into the outfield grass to make the catch and record the second out. So following the base hit from Hunter Cole to open up the inning, two quick outs follow. So Cole stands on third with two away for Old Dominion and Alex Gulasano, who struck out looking in his first plate appearance up once again. Gulasano not having the same kind of success here at historic hicks as guys like Alberto Sanchez and Zach Wojnarowski and even Hunter Cole. As I mentioned, the first outing against Edenton, he went 0 for 3 in four plate appearances with three strikeouts. He's already got a strikeout looking in this contest. Takes the first pitch for strike one, swinging, and then the second pitch for ball one. So count even to Gulasano, one ball and one strike. The 1-1. One -one. That one swung on and popped in the air. Frustrated, he slams the bat into the ground. About two steps down the first base line. Easter, the first baseman, drifting over to his left. Makes the two-handed catch for the third and final out of the inning. No runs come across for Old Dominion on one hit. One runner left on and Cole at third. No errors on part of the Edenton Steamers. We head to the bottom of the third inning. Steamers lead by one. It's three to two here at Historic Hicks Field. I'm Patrick Foster. You're listening to Edenton Steamers Baseball, only on the Edenton Steamers YouTube Network. The Albemarle Area United Way is a nonprofit organization that improves residents' lives in nine counties throughout northeastern North Carolina. This year, the Steamers have partnered up with the United Way and are looking forward to helping raise money for their services. On Saturday, July 25th, the Steamers will be wearing specially themed patriotic jerseys for their game. The jerseys will be auctioned off during the game, and all proceeds will go back to the Albemarle Area United Way. If you would like to have this one-of-a-kind jersey, be sure to be here that night and support a good cause. New pitcher on the mound for the Old Dominion hitters. It's number 36, Brandon Rogers. Not too much info on Rogers as he wasn't listed on the updated roster. However, he has made an appearance for Old Dominion, just one. He came against Greenbrier back on the 26th of June. He threw for two innings, allowed one run to score, one of a few to come across in the game for Greenbrier. On two hits, three walks. He struck out six along the way as well and opens up the at-bat to Brody Rubenstein with back-to-back -back balls as the top of the order is due up for the Steamers offense. The 2-0 to Rubenstein. Taken inside, Rubenstein has to adjust to avoid being hit, but it's called a strike on the middle inside part of the plate. The 2-1 now on its way from Rogers is swung on and fouled straight back up and over the grandstand. Rubenstein grounded out to second to open up the contest in the bottom of the first for Edenton. Hanging curveball there. And he pulled the string on it as Rubenstein goes down swinging, bringing up Jared Kaufman. Jared Kaufman, 
0 for 1 today. He opened the contest with a fly out to first base. First pitch swinging is Kaufman, but he comes up empty as the count moves to no balls and one strike. The 0 1 on its way. That one saws him off a bit, but the bat stays intact. So that one comes off the inside part of the bat, flies out into shallow center field. Zach Morris, the shortstop, drifting back to record the second out of the inning. Now Houston Wright digs in. Houston Wright was a flame that had no retardant at the plate for quite a bit. No extinguisher on the planet could put him out for a while, but he went hitless against Greenbrier. Back on the third, 10 to seven game hitting streak. And is 0 for 1 today. Started with a strikeout looking as the third out in the bottom of the first as the steamers went 1, 2, 3 to open up the ball game. Another hanging curveball. Wright lofts it over down the third baseline. The third baseman Hammonds drifting back and putting it away with just one hand to put a conclusion to the bottom of the third inning. No hits, no runners left on, no runs come across to score for Eatonton in the inning, no errors on part of your Old Dominion hitters, if you're a fan of the Old Dominion hitters. Cup, Morris, and Elledge. The three do up for Old Dominion as we head to the top of the fourth inning. Score still three to two in favor of the hometown clams. You're listening to Edenton Steamers Baseball only on the Edenton Steamers YouTube network. Trevor Kirk back on the mound for his fourth inning of work. Dylan Cup, the center fielder, to lead off for Old Dominion in the inning. Cup walked in his opening at bat. Back in the bottom or top of the second. So still looking for his first official at bat tonight. First pitch swinging, and he fouls it off behind the. Old Dominion dugout down the first base line. Second pitch to Cup is swung on and fouled off once again, this time a bouncer behind home plate. Cup with three singles and one double on the year. He's got four RBIs and has come across to score four times as a runner. It's also drawn four walks. Takes the third pitch of the at-bat for strike three called on the inside part of the zone. Nice at-bat there from Trevor Kirk to open up the top of the fourth. As we're now back at the top of the order for Old Dominion. We've gone around twice, so Zach Morris digs in for his third plate appearance. He's one for one today with a walk and a single. First pitch from Kirk to open up the at bat. A nice looking one. A breaking pitch, though, that found its way too far outside the zone for ball one. Second pitch, fastball in the dirt, takes a hop off the chest of Kermode. Bounces into the infield grass. The 2-0 -oh on its way from Kirk. Take it for strike one. Kirk working quickly now, the 2-1. -oh. 
That one swung on and lined down the first base line. Easter having to lay out for it, but it gets down and starts rolling down the right field line. All the way to the corner between the bullpen and the outfield wall. He's rounding second, heading for third. The throw comes in from hip, and he slides in safely at third for a triple. A one-out triple for Zach Morris as the second batter here in the top of the fourth for Old Dominion. Nice hit there for Morris. As it's his first triple on the year. In fact, his first extra base hit. And it comes by way of an oppo triple. Austin Elledge, the second baseman, in once again. With an RBI opportunity as Morris stands on third following the one-out triple. Fouls off the first pitch, takes the, takes the second pitch for ball one. Elledge 0 for 2 today. He struck out back in the first and flew out to right for the second out of the top of the second inning. The 1-1 now. Swung on and grounded to the second baseman, Kaufman. That's going to bring in Morris from third. Kaufman makes the throw over to first in time to record the second out. So we're tied up here at Historic Hicks Field. 3-3. But Old Dominion does hold an advantage in the hit category. Five to two is the differential. And Zach Wojnarowski digs in. He's already got a hit today, a single. That came in the bottom of the top of the second. Takes the first pitch for a called strike one. The 0 one fouled off. So they count quickly against Wojnarowski, 0 and two. Sunset, sunset shining brightly off the scoreboard out and right. Wind blowing out to left field. Wojnarowski takes the 0-2 for ball one, high and outside. Kirk looking to come back with the punch out, the 1-2. Nice pitch there from Kirk. But the umpire saw it too far inside. Maybe a bit high as well. But the count even now at two balls and two strikes with two outs and no runners on following the RBI ground out. Pitch from Kirk, way high. Kermo jumps up and snags that one out of the air. Looking like Odell Beckham with the one-handed grab. Full count pitch on its way from Kirk with none on and two out. Pitch swung on and fouled off. Wojnarowski putting together a solid A-B here. Fell behind 0-2 to start. Has worked it full. And just fouled off the fifth pitch of the at-bat. Curveball taken for ball four. Wojnarowski, impressive at-bat. As he works himself a walk after falling behind in the count 0-2. Becomes the second base runner in the inning for Old Dominion. One run already come in to score here in the top of the fourth following an RBI ground out from Austin Elledge. Now Alberto Sanchez digs in. Sanchez 0 for 1 today with a walk and a strikeout. First pitch to Sanchez, a fastball at the collarbone. Taken for ball one. The 1-0 on its way from Kirk. Swung on and fouled off. So the count evens up at one ball and one strike. Sanchez yet to crack double digits in the RBI column. Eight on the season. Pickoff move from Kirk. So the count sits at one and one. Kirk looking for the third and final out of the inning. He's got the man at the plate, Sanchez, in a 1-1 count, the pitch. Taken for strike two. Nice pitch there from Kirk to put the power bat of those Alberto Sanchez. Behind on the count now, one ball and then two strikes. The pitch swung on and fouled off. Down the right field line. It's the count. Stays parked at one ball and two strikes.
500 average for Sanchez coming into this at bat. Came in 5 for 9 against the Steamers, now 0 for 1 today. The 1 2 swung on and missed, strike 3. Nice pitch there from Kirk that had Sanchez tied up on the swinging attempt. One run comes across on one hit in the inning. One runner left on, no errors for the Edenton Steamers. Four, five, and six due up once again for Edenton. When we come back, it's a tie ball game. 3-3 three, three here at Historic Hicks Field. My name's Patrick Foster. You're listening to Edenton Steamers Baseball only on the Edenton Steamers YouTube network. Shane Easter to lead off in the cleanup spot for Edenton. Easter 0 for 1 on a ground out to second. Steamers looking to retake the lead after Old Dominion tied matters up in the top of the fourth inning. First pitch to Easter. With Rogers still on the mound. Taken for ball one. The 1 0. Swung on and fouled back, so the count evens up at 1 and 1. If you weren't tuned in yesterday, we had Shane Easter up here for about an inning and a half talking about the early start to the season with the Steamers as he takes the 1 1 for a called strike 2. Talking about his upbringing in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and also his time working with the kids here at the Steamers Kids Camp and immediately you just pick up this vibe of a, a fantastic clubhouse guy and that's what everyone on this organization will tell you he brings. Not only a solid bat coming into today with a 381 average but just one of the best personalities you can be around on a baseball team. The 2-2 two -two taken for ball three. So the count full now. The man at the plate Shane Easter leading off for to Three, two taken for ball four. So Easter opens up the bottom of the fourth for the Steamers, the walk. And Josiah Seitler, who was hit in his opening at bat and thrown out, running from first to second in the midst of a fielder's choice, digs in again. Seitler is dangerous as they come at the plate with two home runs on the season. But a average over 470. First pitch for taken for a ball. The second one, a fastball. Nearly clips him on the hip. He slides out of the way for ball two. Throw over. Not in time as Easter just has to step on the bag. Another throw over. And Easter steps on safely. Seitler comes in with a three game hitting streak. Dating all the way back to Greenbrier on the 27th. That pitch comes way inside. Seitler having to duck out of the way of it as it would have smacked him on the helmet. Easter moves up to second base safely. 
So the double play danger no longer a threat for the Steamers offense. Seiler with an average of 430 coming into today. The 3-0 taken all the way from Seitler. 3-0 means no. Count moves to 3-1. Seiler with a chance to pick up his seventh RBI on the year with Easter standing on second. The 3-1 taken for ball four, and it hits off the glove of Inskeep and actually rolls towards the backstop, but Easter doesn't make a move over from second. There's so now two runners on, one of them in scoring position, and Alan Elledge, the skipper for Old Dominion, talking things over with his man on the hill. Doesn't look like it'll be more of a anything other than a conversation. As Elledge will head back to the dugout. And Aaron Copeland digging in. Desperate for a hit. As he grounded in his a fielder's choice in his last plate appearance. And prior to that, Copeland came into tonight with an average under 500 at 0 .95. 0 .095. Swinging at the first pitch, he skies one into left field. Gulasano making his way in on it and puts it away for the first out of the inning. Casey Hare now to dig in. Hare drove in the first run of the game for Eaton with the steamer's first hit, Copeland being the runner that scored. Hare with the hit, earned his first extra base hit on the season. As it was a double, he pulled into right center. First pitch in the at-bat, a breaking ball that just caught the outside black. So the count in the favor of Rogers. No balls in one strike with two on for the Steamers and Easter on second, the lone runner in scoring position. The 0-1 taken inside at the hip for strike two. The 0-2. Nice breaking pitch there from Rogers, but Hare somehow able to lay off. And the count moves to one and two. The one, two. Fastball taken on the outside part of the plate for ball two. So the count even now at two balls and two strikes with two runners on. An opportunity for the Steamers to take a, take the lead with just one out. Rogers with the pitch. Hare rips a line drive into right field. Diving on it is the right fielder Wojnarowski, and he comes up with the catch and records the second out of the inning. Nice catch there from Wojnarowski out in right. Wojnarowski had to dive forward. One of the more awkward plays to make as an outfielder, diving towards the ball rather than to the left or to the right. And now Case Kermode digs in after drilling a two-run home run over the right center field wall for his first hit as a steamer in just his third plate appearance. So he comes into this one rocking a 333 average with a home run. First pitch to Kermode in this at-bat taken for strike one. Two outs, two runners on following the L9 from Casey Hare. Second pitch to Kermode. A fastball in the lower outside part of the zone, but taken for a called strike two. Working quickly is Rogers. The 0-2 maybe even caught Kermode off guard there as it looked like it was just a protection cut. 
Which would make sense as he's down in the count, no balls and two strikes anyway. So the count remains at 0 and 2, with two runners on and two out. Pitch. Big swing and a miss, strike three. No hits for the Steamers. No runs come across, two runners left on, no errors for the Old Dominion hitters in the bottom of the fourth inning. Five, six, and seven do up for the hitters when we come back here at Historic Hicks Field, still tied up 3 3. You're listening to Edenton Steamers Baseball only on the Edenton Steamers YouTube Network. Regulator Marine is a locally owned and operated boat builder who crafts the best center console sport fishing boats in the business. Built in North Carolina and tested against the challenging conditions of the Outer Banks, Regulator boats are seriously tough sport fishers, known for their exceptional fit and finish, as well as a dry, soft, and comfortable ride. Designed for ultimate fishability, incredible comfort, and serious performance at every turn, each boat in their line delivers maximum versatility as you pursue the offshore life. Making his first appearance on the mound, coming in as a relief pitcher for the starter Trevor Kirk for Edenton, the rising senior at American International University, American, Inter American International College, my apologies, the six foot one left hander Joe Kemlich appeared in three games for. American International collected nine and two-thirds inning of work, allowing four runs, two of them earned on four hits, striking out 15, and posting an ERA of 1.86. So everyone here excited to see what Kemlich could do in his first outing out of the bullpen for the Steamers. Hunter Cole to lead off in the inning against Kemlich is the first batter he'll face in the TSL. Throw down from Kermode to signal the beginning of the top of the fifth frame. First, <laughs> First baseman Hunter Cole digs in. Two for two today with a single and a double. Might want to thank center fielder Brody Rubenstein for that double, calling off Houston right on what looked to be a left fielder's ball and trying to make a diving play. Couldn't come up with it. And Cole moved all the way up to second, but didn't matter too much as Cole didn't come around to score. That was back in the top of the third inning. Kemlich with his first pitch on the way for the Edenton Steamers. A swinging sh Attempt from Cole, hard ground ball to Kaufman at second. Hustling down the line is Cole, but the throw beats him to the bag for the first out of the inning. So Kemlich throws one pitch as a steamer and picks up his first out. Now Jerry Hammonds, the third baseman, digging in again out of Walter State Community College. He's 0 for 2 today with a ground out and a strikeout. First pitch to Hammonds, a fastball, high and away. Taken for ball one. Yeah. 
Second pitch, change up. Down the middle of the zone, taken for strike one. Kemelich in 2019 as a sophomore for American International, started 11 games on the mound and pitched 61 and two-thirds innings as Hammonds fouls that one off. He allowed 26 earned runs in 2019 and went for a record of five and five to go with an ERA of 3.74. The one two to Hammonds, way inside. Almost hit him. Surprised it didn't. Count moves to one and two and two. To Hammonds. Looking for his first hit today. The two two to Hammonds. Uh, breaking ball. Couldn't quite find the zone. Count moves to three balls and two strikes. Hammonds was 0 for 3 in four plate appearances last time out against Tidewater. 3 2 taken for a called strike three. Hammonds started walking down to first, looked like he was about to toss the bat towards the dugout, thinking it was going to be ball four, but instead of called strike three for the second out of the inning. So Kemlidge, the first two batters he faces out of the bullpen in the summer for Edenton. Are both recorded as outs. And now JT Inskeep, the catcher, will dig in once again. Inskeep 0 for 1, the fly out to second. Nice breaking pitch there from Kemlich. In the zone for strike one. Second pitch, a wild one. Luckily, no one on base, though. Count moves to one ball and one strike. Ins keep through on the mound for just one inning against Tidewater back on the third. Swinging at the 1-1, one -one, he fouls it off up and onto the roof of the grandstand. It's the count now one and two against JT Inskeep. Came into tonight with a 300 average. Dropped below that as of right now after going 0 for 1 to start. The 1 2 taken right down the middle. Some interesting movement on that pitch that had Inskeep frozen at the plate. No runs come across on, no hits, no runners left on, no errors for the Edenton Steamers. We head now to the bottom of the fifth. Nine hole due up in Jackson Hip before we get back to the top of the order. Still 3 3 as we get ready for the bottom of the fifth frame. My name is Patrick Foster. You're listening to Edenton Steamers Baseball only on the Edenton Steamers YouTube Network. Jackson hip to lead off for the Steamers as we still sit tied up following the top of the fifth inning at three runs apiece. Rogers still on the mound. First pitch to hip, a changeup. That's rolled down the third baseline as hip was way out ahead of it.
Hip awaits the 0-1 from Rogers. The pitch on its way. Skied over the infield. Hunter Cole and Austin Elledge talking it over. Not sure which one was going to make the play. Elledge must have lost the ball at the last second as it drops out of his mitt. And he's standing appalled at himself out in shallow right field after the error. The first error for either side in the contest. So Jackson Hip stands on first, still yet to come up with that elusive first hit as a steamer. Brody Rubenstein up once again as we're back at the top of the order for the steamers. The throw over from Rogers is close, but not in time. As a left-hander, he has the ability to throw over in a pretty sneaky way. Ground ball from Rubenstein over to Cole at first. Diving stop. Makes the play over at second for one. The throw back to Cole at first is not in time. So Rubenstein reaches on a fielder's choice. And moves to 0, and th 0 for 3 today. And Jared Kaufman, who's 0 for 2 with two fly outs, digs in with one out for the Steamers. And Brody Rubenstein standing on first. First pitch to Kaufman way inside as he has to turn his back to it. No contact made, though, as it's taken for ball one. Rogers with the throw over. Rubenstein stands up at first. So the count's still one and one. One and oh, two. Kaufman at the plate. The 1-0, taken for ball two. A fastball way above the zone. And over to the left side of the home plate. The 2-0 now. Swung on a miss, strike one. The Steamers head on the road tomorrow for their first road game, or what should be their first road game. They were supposed to play one to open up the month of July against Greenbrier, but it was rained out and moved to a later date as the 2-1 is taken for ball three. But a reminder that there will be no home broadcast for tomorrow's game, because I don't think anything's changed from the situation last week as they do not have the accommodations for an away broadcast, which is totally fine. Everyone doing their best under the current circumstances as Kaufman fouls off the 3-1 and fills up the count. Three balls and two strikes. The 3-2 now to Kaufman. Fouled off. So Kaufman stays alive with the 3-2 count, one out and one on, and Rubenstein at first following the fielder's choice. Brandon Rogers still to surrender a hit. Kaufman grounds one through the hole, and it takes a hop high off the infield grass and doesn't land until it finds its way into the outfield. So Kaufman picks up his first hit today. He's now one for three. And the Steamers have a runner in scoring position with just one out, with Rubenstein making his way over to second safely. And Houston Wright looking to get things going again. He's 0 for 2 tonight, but a big opportunity with his Steamers tied up with the hitters, 3-3 here in the bottom of the fifth inning and two runners on, and only one away. Wright flew out to third in his last appearance. First pitch to Wright. Breaking ball, swung on and grounded hard. An awkward hop to Cole at first. Makes the throw over to second in time for one. The throw back over to first is also in time. An impressive double play there. That all started with a nice snag at the hot corner from Hunter Cole. One hit for the Steamers in the inning. No runs come across. Two runners left on. One error on part 
of the visiting hitters. We pick up in the top of the sixth inning. Alex Gulasano set to lead off in the eight hole for Old Dominion. Still tied up at three runs aside here at Historic Higgs Field. I'm Patrick Foster. You're listening to Edenton Steamers Baseball only on the Edenton Steamers YouTube network. Kemlich back on the mound for his second inning of work. Went one, two, three in his first inning for the Steamers. Alex Gulasano, the left fielder out of Eastern Mennonite University. In fact, headed there for his first season in the fall. Takes the first pitch from Kemlich for strike one. Gulasano 0 for 2 today with a strikeout looking and a fly out to first base. Second pitch to Gulasano is smacked into center field. Rubenstein quickly coming in on it and records the out on the fly ball. So Gulasano moves to 0 for 3 today. And the first out of the top of the six recorded for the Steamers. Sun officially set here in Edenton, North Carolina. Doug Ott digging in as a pinch hitter for Dylan Cup. Takes the first pitch from Ken Kemlich for strike one. Takes the second pitch for strike two Ott. Went three for four against Tidewater on the third. In four plate appearances, he had two singles and a double. Drove in one run and came across to score as a runner twice. But still hitless as he's 0 for 5 in every plate appearance against Steamer's pitchers. He has appeared in both contests. The 0-2 on its way, swung on and barely fouled off, so Ott stays alive down 0-2. He was 0 for 2 against Edenton in their first contest on the 25th, and then 0 for 3 against Edenton back on the 30th. He struck out three combined times in those two contests. 0-2 swung on and fouled off down the third baseline again in the air. Count remains at 0-2. Ott with an average of 250 on the left side of the plate and a slugging percentage of 333 with four singles and two doubles. Fouls off the 0-2 yet again. It's his third foul ball and three straight pitches. <laughs> Kemlidge looking to pick up his fifth straight out. The 0-2. That one swung on and fouled off down the same way again. So we'll do it again. No balls, two strikes still to count. Ott really making Kemlidge work for this out.
No balls, two strikes, the pitch from Kemlidge, a breaking pitch taken for strike three. Filthy pitch there from Joe Kemlidge, and he knows it, as he has to wipe a smile off from his face after the strikeout looking from Doug Ott and his fifth consecutive out recording on the bump. Now Zach Morris, who tripled for the first time this season in his last at-bat down the right field line, digs in once again. He came in to score courtesy of an RBI ground out as the third run of the game for Old Dominion. Kemlidge opens up the A-B with a fastball taken high and away for ball one. The 0 one way inside. Morris showed bunt and had to scramble out of the way. As there was a fastball taken way inside. Count moves to 2-0. Two balls, no strikes. Pitch on the way from Kemlidge. Swung on, and that one's lofted in the air. To right field, Jackson hip squaring it up and putting it away for the third and final out of the inning. Kemlidge, six consecutive outs on the mound out of relief for Edenton. Three up, three down in the inning for Old Dominion. No hits, no runners left on, no runs come across, no errors on part of the Edenton Steamers. When we come back, the heart of the order once again for Edenton, four, five, and six do up. I'm Patrick Foster. You're listening to Edenton Steamers Baseball only on the Edenton Steamers YouTube network. Cole Taylor starting the bottom of the sixth on the mound for Old Dominion. The rising junior at Pitt Community College. But his high school ball for, I should not have even set myself up for this. I cannot pronounce this name. Juan Cheese Christian Academy. I should have been smarter than that. That's my apologies. I, I'm sorry if I have said anyone with the pronunciation out of North Carolina. Calls Columbia, North Carolina home. He's made one appearance on the year, and it was a start against Edenton. Back on the 25th, he threw for just two-thirds of an inning. Four runs came across on just one earned as he picked up the loss, allowing two hits and walking four batters. Shane Easter, the cleanup batter for Edenton tonight, came in with an average above 380, but has started off tonight 0 for 1 with a walk. Neither side able to bring one across in the fifth inning. Old Dominion held scoreless in the top of the sixth. We'll see if the Edenton Steamers can put one back on the board. Here in the bottom of the sixth, they've been held scoreless since the bottom of the second, in which they saw three runners cross the plate. Two of them coming off a Case Kermode home run, his first hit of the year. First pitch taken for a ball, second one taken for a ball, so 2-0 the count now to Shane Easter, the man at the plate. Two hole on its way to Easter. Slider. Take him middle away for strike one. So the count, two balls and one strike. Now 
The 2 1 now. Swung on and fouled off, so the count moves to two balls and two strikes. Count even at two and two, no outs. East of the leadoff man. Looking to get things rolling for the steamer's offense. He lines the two two to Elledge at second. It dies right on the dirt. Slowly rolls into his glove, but he's able to make the throw over in time for the first out of the inning. Now Josiah Seitler digging in. Has appeared at the place twice tonight, but yet to record an official at bat. Was hit by a pitch in the second inning. And back in the fourth, drew a base on balls. <laughs> Seitler looking to extend that three-game hitting streak. Once again, won two for four yesterday with a single and a double lead. Edenton and hits in the contest. Big swing and a miss at the first pitch breaking ball. Oh, well, won the count. No balls, one strike the pitch. Comes up empty on the swing. So the count now 0-2 against Seitler with one already gone for Steamers to kick off the bottom of the sixth. And no runners on. The 0-2 on its way. Taylor thought that one was going to be a called strike three, but instead taken high above the zone. Count moves to one ball and two strikes. The one two on its way to Seitler. Taken far inside. So the count evens up at two balls and two strikes. Count even at two and two. One out. Taylor. The pitch to Seitler. Way outside, the count fills up. 3 2 to Josiah Seitler, who could. With a ball. Make his way down to first. Still without an official at bat tonight. Full count pitch on its way. Swung on, and that one's lofted into center field. Relatively straight away, though, as the center fielder, Doug Ott, doesn't have to move too far to put away the second out of the inning. So Seitler now 0 for 1 today. And Aaron Copeland digging in. Copeland came into today with an average of .095. But now lower than that as he's 0 for 2 today as he grounded in a field, into a fielder's choice in the second and flew out to left in the fourth inning. Two outs. He takes the first pitch for ball one. Something about Aaron Copeland, he's not someone that is going to be changed too, too easily, but not by lack of coachability, more so just sure in his ways as he skies the second pitch to deep right field, looking up as the right fielder at the wall. It's gone. Aaron Copeland with his first home run of the season and staying to his ways just paid off for him there. Staying aggressive early in the count, down 1-0. He belts the second pitch of the at-bat over the right field wall for his second homer of the season and gives the Steamers a 4-3 lead here in the bottom of the sixth inning. And very little emotion there from Copeland. That's just the player he is. Doesn't wear his emotion on his sleeve, just goes out there and takes care of business. The product out of Clinton, South Carolina, picks up his first blast of the season, a solo shot to right. It's also his first extra base hit of the season as he came into today with just two singles. And now Casey Hare, who's got a hit today, grounds the first pitch right back to Taylor at the mound. 
He'll jog over just a few steps towards Hunter Cole at first, make the flip over for the third and final out of the inning. One run comes across on one hit, a solo shot to right off the bat of Aaron Copeland. No runners left on and no errors on part of the Old Dominion hitters. When we come back, 2-3-4 due up for Old Dominion. You're listening to Edenton Steamers Baseball only on the Edenton Steamers YouTube network. The Steamers are excited to announce the upcoming Magic 95.9 night at Historic Hicks Field. On Friday, July 24th, one lucky fan will go home with $25,000 courtesy of Magic 95.9. Mark your calendars now. You will not want to miss it. Magic 95.9 is a proud sponsor of your Edenton Steamers. Tune in every weekday morning from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. and listen in with Bill Benjamin. Magic 95.9, the music lover station. New slinger on the mound for Edenton. It's number 12, the right-hander out of Lenore Ryan University, Ray Stokem. Stokem, thus far in the season, has collected two and a third innings pitched, allowed three earned runs to cross. On just one hit, he's walked six batters, though, hit three of them, and struck out five. So Stokem looking to turn his fortunes around thus far on the bump. In his last appearance, it was one to forget. He threw for just a third of an inning, walking three batters. Struck out one, but allowed two earned runs to cross. That came against Greenbrier back on the 27th. First man up is a pinch hitter for Austin Elledge. Takes the first pitch for strike one, second pitch off the plate for ball one. It's Finn Swafford, number 13, the freshman out of Shenandoah University. Count even to Swafford, takes the 1-1 one -one for ball two. Against Tidewater on the third, Swafford was one for two with a single and four plate appearances. Takes the 2-1 for strike two, a fastball just hung on to the top part of the zone. Swafford went 0 for 2 as a defensive substitution in two plate appearances as he takes the 2-2 two -two for ball three off the plate. So they count even now, three balls and two strikes. He struck out twice against Edenton on the 30th. Stokem looking for the first out of the inning. Full count pitch on its way. Swung on and missed strike three. And a sigh of relief from Ray Stokem as I'm sure he's been itching for a solid start on the mound out of the bullpen as his first two definitely haven't gone his way. But he picks up the first out of the top of the seventh with a swinging strikeout. And now Zach Wojnarowski, the right fielder, will dig in once again. First pitch to Wojnarowski, taken low for ball one. Second pitch taken for a ball, so the count quickly works against Stokem. Two balls and no strikes. Wojnarowski one for two today with a single to right and a line out. He also walked once in the contest as he takes the 2-0 for strike one, a fastball middle away. 
2-1 the count with none on and one out the pitch. Swung on and fouled back. Nice pitch there from Stokum as that was definitely in the strike zone but in a spot where Wojnarowski couldn't do much with it on the handle of the bat. The 2-2 two -two now on its way. Swung on and missed, strike three. In the dirt though, so Kermode will pop up and make the throw down to first to record the out officially. But back to back, swinging strikeouts for Ray Stokem on the mound here in the top of the seventh and Alberto Sanchez digs in, looking to pick up where he left off in his last time out against Edenton. Sanchez went three for five against Edenton with the home run of the contest. He's now 0 for 2 with a walk today. First pitch to Sanchez. Looked like a fastball. It looked like it was in the zone too, but called ball one, maybe a little low. The 1-0 now -on from Stokem. Called for a late strike one. Umpire really had to think that one over. So the count evens up at one ball and one strike. The pitch from Stokem in the dirt. So the count moves to two and one. The two one. Taken inside and low for ball three. So Stokem not taking any chances the hefty hitting Alberto Sanchez at the plate with two outs and nobody on. The 3-1. Swung on and missed for strike two. Nice comeback pitch from Stokem after falling behind 3-1. and one. So the count fills up. Stokem looking for the 1-2-3 inning. The 3-2 pitch. A breaking pitch called strike three on the inside part of the zone. Sanchez slowly walks back towards the dugout, shaking his head. No hits, no runs, no runners left on for Old Dominion, and no errors on part of the Edenton Steamers defense. When we come back, 8-9, and the top of the order due up for the Edenton Steamers. 4-3 the score. I'm Patrick Foster. You're listening to Edenton Steamers Baseball, only on the Edenton Steamers YouTube network. Finn Swafford will start out and right after coming in as a pinch hitter for Austin Elledge. Over at second base now is number 18, Alex Gulasano. Morris remains that short. Doug Ott out in left field. Case Kermode at the plate. The catcher takes the first pitch for a ball, second one for a ball, a fastball high and away.
The 2 1 taken for a ball, so the count moves to 3 and 1. The 3 1 taken for strike 2. 13's in right field, so who did 13 go in for? The 3 2. It was a half hearted swinging attempt, but the blue behind the plate called it a swinging strike three, so Kermode down on strikes for the second time tonight. Jackson hip digs in. Hip looking for his first hit, both tonight as, as a steamer still. Ivy, Ivy Leaguer takes the first pitch from Taylor in the at-bat for strike one. With one out, the 0-1 on its way to hip from Taylor. Fastball taken middle away for ball one. The 1-1, one, one. swung on and missed from hip. So the count now in Taylor's favor on the mound, one ball and two strikes. Jackson hip, the environmental science major at the Ivy League Brown. Awaits the 1-2, and it hits him. A breaking ball that Taylor lost control of. And clearly, as he Reacts pretty obviously in displeasure. Brody Rubenstein digs in now with a runner on and only one away. All right. I had to figure out some defensive substitutions there. My apologies. Rubenstein holds back the bunt attempt on the first pitch, so the count moves to 1-0. The defensive substitutions now stand as Douglas Ott is now in left field. Alex Gulasano, who was in left, now moved to center. Finn Swafford, who came in as a pinch hitter for Austin Elledge in right, and Zach Wojnarowski, who was playing right, has moved up to second base as Rubenstein takes the 1-0 for ball two. Two balls, no strikes. One out and a runner on the pitch to Rubenstein. Fastball taken low for ball three. The 3 0. Taken low and inside for ball four. Crowd reacts. And some moans and groans and a sign of. Their discontent. The 3 1. Swung on and ripped on the ground towards Cole at first. It bounces off his glove to Wojnarowski at second. The throw to Cole is low and sneaks past Cole at first base and into foul territory. The throw to second pulls the covering Morris off the bag. So Rubenstein slides into second safely as Hit moves all the way up to third on the play. So two runners on with one out following the reach on an error. The error is going to be ruled against Zach Wojnarowski at second as Cole had to make the extra effort to knock the ball down originally. And Jared Kaufman, who singled in his last at-bat to left field, digs in with two runners in scoring position. 
One of them being the speedy center fielder Brody Rubenstein over at second. First pitch to Kaufman in the A-B. In the dirt. Inskeep keeps it in front of him. The count early, one ball and no strikes to Jared Kaufman. The 1 0 to Kaufman. Taking for ball two. I want to remind folks once again that tomorrow's contest at Greenbrier will not have a home broadcast. Home broadcast will pick up on Tuesday as Kaufman skies one out to right field with one out. That'll be enough to bring the runner home from third, though. Hip tagging up makes his move. Rubenstein tags up at second and moves up to third as well as Hip comes in to score. And the Steamers take a two-run lead with now two outs in the bottom of the seventh. But still no hits in the inning. And Houston Wright will dig in. Alan Elledge, the head coach, will come out to relieve Taylor of his duties on the mound as he signals to the bullpen. Still cannot tell who's coming in for Old Dominion. Coming in now is number four, Joseph Ward. 24, my apologies. Ahmad Goldson. Goldson, a redshirt sophomore out of Lewisburg College, played his high school ball at Menchville High School in Newport News, Virginia. He's made three appearances on the mound for Old Dominion thus far. He's made one start. He's collected one and one-third innings pitched, allowed eight earned runs to cross on his behalf. A total of eight runs, four hits, 11 walks, and two strikeouts. And his last appearance against Greenbrier, which came back on July 2nd, he threw for two-thirds of an inning, allowed one earned run, one hit, walked three batters, and struck out one as well. And the first man he'll face is Houston Wright with two outs, and Brody Rubenstein, the center fielder who reached on an error, standing over at third base. So Houston Wright still looking for his first hit today. Looking to avoid going hitless in two consecutive contests. He struck out to open up his night at the plate back in the first inning. Flew out to third base back in the third and grounded into a double play back in the fifth. And he'll be the first batter for Edenton to face Ahmad Goldson. Ball gets past Inskeep at the plate. Rubenstein almost bit, but Inskeep able to keep it in front of him for the most part as it dribbles just a bit to his right. Rubenstein would have been out before he even decided to leave third if, had he made the decision. Right fouls off the 1 0, so the count moves to 1 and 1. The Steamers bring one across already in the inning. As they've now scored in back-to-back -back innings. Here in the bottom of the seventh as well as the bottom of the sixth. The 1-1 fastball low and inside. 
Prior to the bottom of the sixth, however, the steamers were held scoreless after a three-run bottom of the second. So a nice way to bounce back with two straight innings with runs scored. Swing an, ug an ugly pitch there. So right evens up at the count at two balls and two strikes as he helps out Ahmad Goldson swinging at a ball in the dirt. Twos from top to bottom. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, one runner on third. The pitch to right. Swung on and hit straight up in the air. Drifting foul. And will actually smack on top of the grandstand. You probably could hear that thud. So the count sits at two balls and two strikes with two away. Houston Wright looking to avoid collecting the third and final out. Rubenstein on his way home. He gets caught in a rundown as Goldston's going to run down the third base line and tag him out for the third and final out of the inning. Instead, they call it a balk. I apologize. And now there's going to be a discussion. Alan Elledge comes out to talk to the third base umpire. Some confusion on the play. They have not awarded Edenton the run quite yet. Alan Elledge frustrated will head back to the dugout after the steamers score. on the balk from Ahmad Goldson. It was a late call that was made after he'd applied the tag. So my apologies for not being right on. The 2-2, two -two, taken for ball three. Two runs have come across the plate for Edenton as they now hold a three-run lead here in the bottom of the seventh, six to three. But they're still being out hit in the contest Five to four. Full count pitch with two outs and no runners on on the way. Wright stays alive. Just barely fouling that one off in the inner part of the bat towards his hands. So the count remains full at three balls and two strikes with two outs and no runners on. Ahmad Goldson looking to escape. The 3-2, swung on and grounded hard to the second baseman Wojnarowski. Fields it on a hop, makes the throw over, and the side is retired. But not before two runs come across for Edenton. No hits, though, and no runners left on. No er One error on part of the visiting hitters. When we come back to kick off the top of the eighth inning, it'll be Hunter Cole leading off in the five hole, followed by Jerry Hammonds and JT Inskeep. 6-3 the score here at Historic Hicks. Top of the eighth. When we come back, you're listening to Edenton Steamers Baseball only on the Edenton Steamers YouTube network. College of the Albemarle has proudly served 
northeastern North Carolina for nearly 60 years. COA is North Carolina's first community college with four campuses across seven counties, excellent educational programs, and a strong tradition in the Albemarle region. Their real passion? Transformation of their students as they achieve their dreams and grow to better serve their communities. No matter your background, whatever your goals at COA, you'll transform your tomorrow. Visit their website today at www.albemarle.edu. Once again, that's College of the Albemarle at www.albemarle.edu. New pitcher on the mound for the Inton Steamers. The redshirt senior, Brett Falk, out of Lenore Ryan University, who's made just two appearances in league play for making three appearances, including the first game of the league season against Greenbrier. His first batter, he'll face out of the pen, Hunter Cole, the first baseman, who's two for three today. Grounded out to second in his last plate appearance. Folk has collected five total innings on the mound through three games. Has one loss, one win to his credit and no losses. As Cole swings and misses at the 1-0. So the count even at one ball and one strike. In his last appearance, Folk worked for two full innings against Old Dominion back on the 30th, allowing five earned runs to cross on five hits. With one walk and two Ks as he gets Cole behind in the count. One ball and two strikes. The one two on its way from Falk. Fastball in the dirt. So the count moves to two and two against the Lenore Ryan redshirt senior. The 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and missed by Cole. Kermode holds on to it behind the plate. So Cole goes down swinging. Folk strikes out the first player he faces out of the pen. And now Jerry Hammonds, who's 0 for 3 today with two strikeouts, one swinging and one looking. Digs in looking to change his fortunes. First pitch to Hammonds is a ball, fastball low and outside. Some fireworks going off in the distance as folks all around the country continue to celebrate our nation's Independence Day. Folk in the windup, kicks and deals the 1 0. It's swung on and fouled off behind home plate. So they count even now, one ball and one strike. One's from top to bottom. One ball, one strike, one out. No runners on. The 1-1. One, one. Swung on and missed. Nice off-speed pitch there from Brett Falk. As the count moves now to one ball and two strikes. The one two on its way. Swung on and grounded between third and short. Diving is Aaron Copeland, but that one gets passed into left field. So a one out single for Jerry Hammonds. And that'll bring up JT Inskeep, who's also looking for his first hit of the day. Struck out looking as the third and final out of the top of the fifth. He's also walked by way of a hit by pitch. First pitch to Inskeep is fouled off. So he falls behind 0-1 early in the count. Second pitch on its way to Inskeep. Taken inside for ball one. Hammonds, not much of a speed demon over there at first, so unlikely that he'll attempt to steal. Double play possibility for the Steamers defense with one out. 
and a runner on first. The 1-1 one -one on the way. Swung on and missed. Ins keep. Not a confident looking swing there. See, it looks like he changed his mind about halfway around. So now the count one and two against the catcher. Pitch on its way from Folk. Breaking pitch. With some heat behind it. But it's low and away for ball two. So the count now two balls and two strikes. Count even. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Man on first. The pitch. Just fouled off at the plate. And straight down into home plate. So the count remains at two and two. Two balls, two strikes once again from Brett Falk. Swung on, and this time it slowly rolled down the third baseline, but it drifts foul. So once again, we'll await the two and two from Brett Falk. The Steamers are excited to announce that they are hosting the 2020 Tidewater Summer League All-Star Game on Sunday, July 19th. This will be an exciting opportunity to see the best players that the TSL has to offer on one field together. The day will be full of exciting events, including a home run derby at 4 p.m. and the All-Star Game at 6 p.m. Tickets will be available to purchase soon on the Steamers website, so stay tuned for more information. The 2-2 two -two with a runner on, taken very, very far inside. Almost hit the batter at the plate, but instead the count runs full. It's now three balls and two strikes. The 3-2. Swung on, and that one smoked in the air down the left field line. Had the distance for a two-run blast, but pulled too far foul. So the count remains full at three balls and two strikes. Inskeep putting together a solid at-bat here. Sixth pitch, the at-bat on its way. Seventh pitch. 3-2, swung on and missed. Nice comeback pitch there from Folk as he shrugs his shoulders. Maybe a little flex there from the man on the mound. Or a sigh of relief. And now Alex Gulasano. Gulasano still looking for his first hit today. 0 for 3 thus far. Looking to avoid his second hitless outing against the Edenton Steamers. First pitch to Gulasano is fastball, blown away. Solid Sunday night crowd here at Historic Hicks Field, obviously observing social distance and rules. The 1-0 hits Gulasano in the small of his back. A stinger as Gulasano makes his way down to first base. And that'll bring up Doug Ott. Ott came in as a pinch hitter for Dylan Cup. And struck out looking in his last plate appearance. His first of the night. Recorded as the second out in the top of the sixth. First pitch to him, taken low and away. Not too far outside the zone. Nice pitch from Falk, but it's called ball one. The 1-0 now to Ott. Taken inside for strike one. So the count evens up at one ball and one strike. One one swung on and fouled back. So the count moves to one ball and two strikes against the current left fielder for Old Dominion Doug Ott. Ott in an RBI opportunity with his 
Team the hitters still trailing by three following the two-run bottom of the seventh from the Edenton offense. It's six to three here at Historic Hicksfield with two outs in the top of the eighth and a one-two count to out at the plate. The pitch framed well by Kermode, but the umpire won't give him and Brett Folk the benefit of the doubt. So the count moves now to two balls and two strikes with two outs and two on. Folk with the 2-2. Two -two. Framed nicely once again as that one did look as it might have caught the outside part of the zone. Three two, upcoming from Brett Falk. Pitch called strike three, a fastball in at the knees. But this time Brett Falk gets the call. One hit, two runners left on, no runs come across the score, no errors on part of the Steamers defense. When we come back, the Steamers kick off. With the heart of their order, Shane Easter due up as the leadoff man in the inning. 6-3 still our score. Your Steamers lead as we head into the bottom of the eighth. I'm Patrick Foster. You're listening to Edenton Steamers Baseball only on the Edenton Steamers YouTube network. Shane Easter out of Kalamazoo, Michigan will lead off for the Steamers here in the bottom of the eighth inning. His team up by three. It's six to three. First pitch swinging, and it bounces off a home plate and drifts foul. Easter with a slow reaction there, so luckily for him, the ball drifts foul down the line. Count now 0-1 to the first baseman for the Clams tonight. Easter looking to keep that average up where it is. Above 350 following his 0 for 2 day thus far. Swing and a miss at the second pitch. A golf swing. As he was looking to put that one straight down the fairway. O2 pitch on its way from Goldson. In the dirt. Nice take there from Shane Easter. Count moves now to one and two, still in the favor of Ahmad Goldson. One, two. Swing and a miss there from Easter. So he goes down swinging as the first out of the inning for Edenton. And now Josiah Seitler will dig in with one last opportunity to extend that three-game hitting streak. 
He's 0 for 1 today. He was hit by a pitch once in his first at bat and walked in his second on a base on balls and flew out to center back in the seventh inning. First pitch to Seitler is taken low and away for ball one. Alan Alonzo up in the on deck circle where Aaron Copeland would be. 1 0 on its way to Seitler, an off speed pitch taken. Called strike one. The 1 1. Ugly looking hack there from Seitler as he regretted it before he broke his wrist but couldn't hold up in time. So the count moves against him, one ball and two strikes. One out. All ready for the steamers. Goldson in the stretch, delivers the one two. Big swing and a miss there from Seitler as he goes down swinging for the first time tonight. Clearly frustrated Josiah Seitler heads back to the dugout. And that was just such a nice little gesture there from Josiah Seitler. He missed the high five with the bat boy. And rather than being a poor sport and keeping walking, he made sure to turn around and give that young man a high five, even following the strikeout. That just goes to show the character of Josiah Seitler. Copeland is up, as I must have seen incorrectly. Alonzo still waiting over by the dugout. Copeland taking his at-bat, his fourth of the night. He homered for his first long ball of 2020, at least here in the summer. He's one for three tonight. Grounded back in the second inning into a fielder's choice and flew out to left in the fourth. Check swing. They appeal down to first and it's waved off so the count moves to one ball and one strike. The 1-1 one, one now to Copeland with two away and no on. He's taken for ball two. So the count's still two balls and one strike to the third baseman, Copeland. Pitch on its way from Goldson. Bounces in the dirt and takes a high hop over Inskeep at the plate and winds up about maybe 20 feet up on the net behind home plate. So the count three and one to the third baseman out of Spartanburg Methodist College, Aaron Copeland. <laughs> Goldson with a 3-1 swung on and missed Copeland couldn't hold back on the 3-1 so the count runs full at three balls and two strikes with no runners on and two outs for the Edenton Steamers who hold a 6-3 lead here in the bottom of the 8th inning full count pitch on its way Swung on and just fouled off. So Koblen will see one more pitch at least. Full count pitch on its way once again from Goldson. Swung on and hit hard on the ground to Hammonds at third. He collects it, makes the throw over to first in time, and the side is retired. Three up, three down go the Steamers as no hits, no runners left on, and no runs come across. No errors in this inning on part of the Old Dominion hitters. When we come back, top of the order, do up. Zach Morris to lead off for Old Dominion in their last shot in the top of the ninth. With they trail by three. Six to three is our score heading into the final frame. I'm Patrick Foster. You're listening to Edenton Steamers Baseball, only on the Edenton Steamers YouTube Network.
Ryan Kutz on the mound to close things out for the Steamers here in the bottom of the ninth. Making his first appearance. Actually, since Greenbrier back on the third. So pitching in two straight games is Ryan Kutz. He threw for one inning, allowed one hit, struck out one. But he looked good in the outing because he didn't let one run come across and no more than one, run, one base runner on. Fell behind, behind in the count with the first pitch to Zach Morris but comes back with a fastball in the zone for strike one. Kutz's family also in attendance today. Quite a few families for the Eaton Steamers here. Case Kermode, Casey Hare, Ryan Kutz, all with their relatives looking on. Morris falls behind in the count. One and two following the foul ball. Morris digging in. Awaits the 2-2 from Kutz. Pitch on its way. Way over and behind him. Morris has to duck out of the way of that pitch. Might have been a slider that Kutz lost the handle on. Often looks to put batters away with that slider. Two-two pitch on its way from Kutz. Swung on that one's lined into center field, and it's going to get down. A one-hopper right in front of the racing rope. Brody Rubenstein. <laughs> so the first batter of the inning, Zach Morris, finds his way on for his second hit tonight. Now number 20, Seth Branson, getting a pitch hit opportunity. Branson, the redshirt freshman at Pellissippi State. Takes the first pitch from Kutz, a ball. No moans from the crowd, but I'm not sure where that pitch missed. Count moves to one ball and no strikes against Branson. Second pitch on its way. Runner on the move from first. The throw down from Allen Brown, who's coming as his defensive substitution, takes a hop to the left of the bag. And so the runner slides in safely. Double play opportunity to take him away from the Edenton Steamers. Branson was used as a pitcher last night as Alan Brown heads out to the mound to talk things over with Ryan Kutz following the stolen base. Branson, in that one inning of work that he put in on the mound against Old Dominion, Allowed just one hit, no runs to cross. Did not make an appearance against Edenton back on the 30th, but did so back on the 25th, where he went two for four against the Steamers. Struck out just once. The 2-0, taken inside for ball three. So the count moves to 3-0 and oh, with 3-4-5 and five due up for Old Dominion, and no outs, and a three-run lead for the hometown Clams. The 3-0 pitch, slider high and inside. So Branson works a walk in his first at-bat, a pinch hit opportunity, and Zach Wojnarowski, who singled in four plate appearances, is set up. Connor Daly, pitching coach, making his second appearance tonight, talking things over with Ryan Kutz. Doug Williams, Rick Gilbert, refrigeration, plumbing, heating, and air conditioning has been serving residents and businesses in the Elizabeth City and surrounding areas since 1974. They are a full service licensed and insured refrigeration, plumbing, heating, and air conditioning contractor. Customer service is their number one priority. They provide honest, ethical, and reliable service to every one of their customers. Give them a call today at 252-338-3051. Wojnarowski, who started in right field, winds up at second base tonight.
First pitch taken by Wojnarowski for strike one. Double play ball back as a possibility for the Steamers defense with two runners on. On first and second for Old Dominion. Official time called. Signal over to Wojnarowski. So I'm assuming Wojnarowski called for time. And the 0-1 hits him to load the bases for Old Dominion. And Alberto Sanchez, who's been quiet all night, but a big a threat as they come in that right-handed hitter's box. He's got two home runs against the Edenton Steamers in the first two meetings between the two squads. First pitch to Sanchez is high and inside for ball one. So the bases are loaded. Still nobody out here in the top of the ninth inning. A ground ball would do wonders for the Steamers defense, although it will allow a run to come in and score. The 1-0. Taken for called strike one. One one on its way. That one sent deep to left center field. Looking up at the wall is Rubenstein, and that one's off the wall. One run comes in to score. The second run comes in as well. Wojnarowski moves all the way up to third, and Alberto Sanchez pulls up to second with a two-run double. Six to five is the score. Sanchez comes up with his first hit of the night, and boy, is it a big one. A two-RBI double. That comes with no outs here in the top of the ninth inning. Now eight hits for Old Dominion in tonight's contest. And no double play ball possibility for the Steamers infield. With two runners on in scoring position, Sanchez on second, Wojnarowski on third. First pitch to Cole in the A-B is a ball high. Taken for ball one. A strikeout would be huge as the whole steamers still hold on to a one-run lead here in the top of the ninth. Second pitch to Cole. A fastball right down the pipes for a called strike one. And that at-bat from Alberto Sanchez was an impressive one. After starting today 0 for 4, he stays aggressive at the plate, knowing the stakes, and belts a two-run two double off the wall and left that, honestly, everyone here thought might have been out off the bat. 1-1 one, one swung on and foul tipped by Cole at the plate. So the count moves to 1-2. and two. Action in the Steamers' bullpen. It is a right-hander. I can't tell quite who it is from this angle. Number 23, Nick Roser. One ball, two strikes to Cole at the plate with none out. And two runners on following the two-run double from Alberto Sanchez to make it a one-run game. Two one swung on it. One two swung on a miss. My apologies. For strike three. Big strikeout for Ryan Kutz and the Steamers defense for the first out of the inning. But they're gonna need about the same. Or a something is else as they intentionally walk Jerry Hammonds to load the bases to set up the double play opportunity. Smart move there from the Steamers head coaching staff. Now JT Inskeep the catcher with a chance to tie things up or even take the lead with the bases loaded 
down one and one out here in the top of the ninth. A double play ball ends it. First pitch, a ball. Second pitch on its way from Kutz. Ends the eye, the zone for strike two. Or strike one, my apologies. The one one on its way from Kutz. Taken high and outside. So the count moves to two balls and one strike with one away and the base is loaded. To JT Inskeep. Inskeep hitless today. Also looking to avoid the hat trick. He's struck out in his last two plate appearances. Kutz steps off. Could cut the tension with a butter knife here at Historic Hicks Field. As the steamers hold on to a thin one run lead with the bases loaded to just one out. 2 1 on its way. Nice breaking pitch there from Kutz to even up the count at two balls and two strikes. And my oh my, what an out this would be. Kutz kicks and deals the 2 2. Swung on and missed, strike three. Huge punch out there for Ryan Kutz. And the Steamers defense. And up comes Alex Gulasano, who's hitless today. What a situation it is for the starting left fielder now playing center field after a couple of defensive substitutions. 0 for 3 with a hit by pitch in the contest. And with the game on the line for Old Dominion with two outs here in the top of the ninth. The ball is in his court as he takes the first pitch for strike one. Second pitch on its way from Kutz, but time called. And you can hear the displeasure from the crowd. Not sure if that was an official time call or I believe Gulasano called time at the plate. So the count remains at 0-1. The 0-1 on its way. Swung on and grounded back to Coots up towards the middle of the infield. Kaufman fields it over at second base. The throw gets past Easter at first. One run comes in to score. The game is tied. The second one, Sanchez comes in from second. And now Old Dominion takes a one-run lead here in the top of the ninth with two away. I'm not sure exactly why Kaufman didn't at least look to make a play at second. As it looked as though he fielded it right next to the bag. He could have just stepped on it and recorded the third and final out, but my view here could be skewed. That ball could have wound up in front of second, and Kaufman could have recognized that it would have taken him too long, so he rushed the throw over to first. And on the error, Old Dominion takes a one-run lead. Now Doug Ott at the plate, still with two outs, but now two runners remaining in scoring position. First pitch, swung on and fouled off. It's the count 0-2, in fact, to the man at the plate dugout. 0-2 on its way. It's slapped at and hit into shallow left field. In comes the runner, Hammonds, from third. Gulasano held up at third. So now a two-run lead for Old Dominion, who had been held scoreless since the top of the fourth inning in which they brought just one run across. They've brought home five here in the top of the ninth. 
Ryan Kutz just didn't have his stuff today as he's relieved of duties. Keep your head high, son. You'll have another opportunity. And Nick Roser out of Catawba Valley Community College will take over on the mound with the steamers trailing by two now. They came in with a three-run lead in the top of the ninth. Roser comes in, having his last outing been against Old Dominion back on the 30th. He threw for two full innings, allowed three hits, no walks. Struck out none, but allowed three earned runs to come across on his watch. They're the only three earned runs he has to his credit this season. He's appeared in three games total, collected four innings of work. Allowed four hits, two walks, struck out three. And four runs total have come across, but just the three earned. What a tough turn this took for the Edenton Steamers here in the top of the ninth inning. Five runs come across for Old Dominion. But granted, it was the part of the lineup that has looked to to do that. Top of the order as Zach Morris led off in the inning. And Morris back up once again as we've batted around here in the top of the ninth. Nick Roser tasked with keeping the deficit where it is. With runners on first and third. Zach Morris to dig in once again. He singled to lead off in the inning. It was a line drive to center field. Came around to score on the double by Alberto Sanchez. That made it just a one-run contest. First pitch from Roser. Off-speed pitch taken for strike one. Steamer's offense with their work cut out for him. At the conclusion of this inning, at the very least, they'll face a two-run deficit. Second pitch from Roser to Morris, swung on and missed. So 0-2 the count to the man at the plate. Two hours and 45 minutes passed here in tonight's contest. The 0-2 on its way from Roser. Low outside the zone. So the count now, one and two. On ball two strikes the pitch. Taken outside for ball two. Two's from top to bottom. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. With two men on, both on the corners. And five runs already come across in the inning. The 2-2 two -two in the dirt. So the count runs full at three balls and two strikes to Zach Morris in his second at bat of the inning. Old Dominion looking to move into first place with a victory here tonight and set the Steamers a half game back out of the top spot. Runners on the move. Morris with a ground ball foul down the third base line. So the count will stay right where it is at three and two. Old Dominion will also take a series lead over Edenton. Here in 2020, with a victory tonight, would move to 2-1 and one in favor of the hitters. The 3-2 on its way, taken for ball four. A complete collapse from Steamer's pitching here in the top of the ninth inning. So the bases are loaded. And Seth Branson digs in for the second time. Came in in a pinch hit opportunity as the second batter in the top of the ninth. 
worked his way on by way of a base on balls. And now in his second opportunity, looks to bring in an RBI to add another insurance run as he takes the first pitch for ball one. The 1-0. -oh. A breaking pitch. Extremely high. Nice job from Alan Brown popping up and at least keeping that one in front of him as it popped in and out of his glove. So they count now 2-0. and oh. The pitch. Far outside. Three straight balls from Roser in this at-bat. Three balls, no strikes, bases loaded. Two outs, the pitch from Roser. Inside ball four. So the third run of the inning comes in as the hitters take a three-run lead here in the top of the ninth inning. And Zach Wojnarowski digging in. Zach Wojnarowski was hit by a pitch in his first at-bat of the top of the ninth. Came around to score on an error from Jared Kaufman. First pitch of the A-B from Roser is low for ball one. No one working in the steamer's bullpen as they're going to look to Roser to get out of this top of the ninth. Second pitch inside for strike one. Bases loaded, two outs, 1-1 one, one count to Wojnarowski at the plate. Who's one for three today with a hit by pitch and a walk. Takes the third pitch for ball two. The 2 1. Wojnarowski looked like he wanted to go around on it, but held up. But probably should have swung as it's a called strike two. So the count even at two balls, two strikes, with two outs and the bases loaded. The pitch in the dirt. Brown keeps it in front of him, so the count runs full now against Nick Roser. <clears throat> Another tense moment as Roser in danger of walking in yet another run. With Zach Wojnarowski awaiting the 3 2. Full count pitch on its way. Runners on the move, and it's ball four. So the seventh run of the inning comes in to score for Old Dominion. And they take a four run lead. It's now 10 to 6 with Alberto Sanchez, who doubled in two runs to make it just a one run game, with Edenton still holding the lead earlier in this inning. Alan Brown and head coach Marshall McDonald are going to talk things over. Anytime the head coach comes out, that means it's likely the end of the day for the man on the mound. And Nick Roser handing the ball over to Marshall McDonald. An unfortunate turn of events for Edenton here in the top of the ninth. They came into the inning leading 6-3. to three. And it is now a 10-6 lead in favor of the hitters. Daniel Willey coming out of the bullpen. Willey with seven total innings of work for the Steamers on the season. He made one start back against Tidewater on the 26th. But thus far, seven total innings, allowed two earned runs, six hits. Has walked six batters with one hit by pitch and struck out eight in his last appearance out of the bullpen against Tidewater on the second. Willie collected two and two-thirds innings, allowed no earned runs. Three runs did come across to score with him on the bump. Let up one hit, walked two, struck out two as well. 
But he'll just be looked upon for damage control. As the steamers trail by four after holding a three run lead to open up the inning. So Sanchez, the man due up, who's one for four today with three strikeouts and an RBI double, two RBI double for that matter, coming earlier in this inning. And what a timely bit of hitting for Alberto Sanchez. Is, if not for him, this game would have likely ended in a steamer's victory. And he'll face Daniel Willie in his second plate appearance in the inning, first pitch from Willie taken inside the zone for a called strike one. Three pitchers have come out of the pen in the inning. Kutz started before giving up the lead. Nick Roser came in to face two batters before allowing two runs to score. And now Daniel Willie out of Ottawa, Tennessee. Looked on to put an end to this bore of an inning. Sanchez belts one to deep right field. That one's carrying at the track, at the wall. Goodbye. Alberto Sanchez, have yourself a ninth inning. A two run double to make it just a one run game earlier in the inning and then comes up here with the bases loaded and belts his third homer of the season here at Edenton. A grand slam, his fourth homer on the season overall. And the second grand slam has been hit here at historic Hicks Field in the 2020 season. The first coming from Jacob Mustaine from the Tidewater Drillers, the second from Alberto Sanchez. And this time off of Daniel Willey. So the lead has ballooned, it's 14 to six. Nine runs, excuse me, 11 runs have come across for Old Dominion here in the top of the ninth. Still two outs, Hunter Cole back up the plate, bounces a ground ball back to Willie who takes just a couple steps off the mound, fields it, and throws it over to first base. Finally, the Steamers are out of the top of the ninth and an uphill battle ahead of them. They trail by eight, it's 14 to six. 11 runs come across to score on five hits. One error on part of the Edenton Steamers. When we come back, Casey Hare to leave off, lead off with Alan Brown waiting on deck and Jackson Hip on double deck, as some might say. 14 to six the score, hitters lead. When we come back, the Steamers look to tie it up and hopefully take the lead down eight. I'm Patrick Foster. You're listening to Edenton Steamers Baseball only on the Edenton Steamers YouTube network.
Andrew Melnick, the new pitcher on the mound for Old Dominion as they look to shut things down here in the bottom of the ninth after posting 11 runs in the top of the ninth inning. In large thanks to Alberto Sanchez, who was hitless coming into the top of the ninth, picks up two hits in the inning in two at-bats. One, a two-run double to cut the three-run Edenton lead to just one, made it 6-3 to 6-5, and then a grand slam to right field to open up the lead to eight. Casey Hare, the leadoff man for Edenton in the inning, takes the first pitch for strike one. And what a mountain the Steamers team has to climb here in the bottom of the ninth against Andrew Melnick, who's been solid thus season against the Edenton Steamers. His only appearances have been against the Clams. Hare draws the count to two and one. Melnick comes in with an ERA of exactly three with Four full in innings of work under his belt against this Edenton team. He also picked up the win against Edenton back on the 30th after allowing just two earned runs on five hits with five strikeouts as well. The 3-1 to Hare, taken for ball four. And now Alan Brown will dig in for the first time tonight. Brown got the night off against Greenbrier. In fact, went one for three against Greenbrier. Spoke too soon. First pitch to Brown, taken for strike one. Brown, I don't know why I would have forgotten that he started in the game. He was he doubled and came in as a run scored off the Brody Rubenstein home run in the bottom of the fifth inning of that contest. Comes in today with a 385 batting average, but still under 20 plate appearances. Takes the first two pitches for strikes. In fact, a swinging strike, too. But takes the 0-2 for ball one in the dirt. And the last thing you want to do if you're Alan Brown here is ground into a double play. Strikeout would be more productive to your cause than that as he pops up the 1-2 to keep the count where it is. The one two again. Flailing swing and miss there from Alan Brown as the first out is recorded against the Steamers. And now Alan Alonzo will pinch hit for Jackson Hit. First pitch is way inside. Alonzo has to scramble out of the way. Alonzo comes into this at bat being hit by a pitch four times to start this season. Only five other steamers have been hit by a pitch before Josiah Seitler was tonight. And not one of them has been hit more than once. And it comes back with a called strike one. 1-1. One, one. For some reason, an appeal down. There was no chance that Alonzo broke the plane on that swing. So the count moves to two balls and one strike. The 2-1. That one's driven deep to left field, looking up as the left fielder. But this one is way gone. Alan Alonzo. Brings the Steamers that much closer to tying this ball game up. It's now 14 to eight here in the bottom of the ninth. Alonzo picks up his third homer of the season, along with his sixth and seventh RBIs. And gets a nice ovation from the crowd and a show of appreciation. But it may be too little too late. Still only one out in the inning. And we come back to the top of the order. Tyler Myers to pinch hit for Brody Rubenstein.
And now for your single suppress between the collar from the one, Tyler Myers. First pitch to Myers, the pinch hitter taken for strike one. In his last appearance, Myers started at third base against Tidewater. Takes back-to-back -back pitches for called strikes. Second one, definitely a bit questionable. Myers went 0 for 3 in that contest. Comes into the night with an average of .091 as he lofts the 0-2 in the air over the infield. On the right side, Hunter Cole, the first baseman, coming in on the grass to put it away for the second out of the inning. Last contest between these two ended 14-8 ended to eight in favor of Old Dominion. And in the contest, Old Dominion went into the top of the ninth, up 9-8 nine, and scored five runs. This time they go into the top of the ninth, trailing by three and score 11. As Tyler McPeak steps up in a pinch hit opportunity for Jared Kaufman. Swings at the second pitch after taking the first one in for a called strike one. So Steamers down to their final strike with two outs, down 14 to eight here in the bottom of the ninth inning. The 0-2 taken for a called strike three. And that's gonna do it. The Old Dominion hitters post 11 runs in the top of the ninth inning in which they came in trailing by three to take the victory 14 to eight with 11 hits in the contest. Make it 10 hits, my apologies. The hitters picked up two errors on the contest to one on part of the Edenton Steamers. But an 11 run top of the ninth inning tells the story in this one. That's gonna do it for this Tuesday night edition of Steamers Baseball. The Steamers come away victorious over Old, Dom Old Dominion by a final of 14 to eight. Apologies, it is a Sunday night edition. I'm starting to lose track of the days. Everything's starting to blur together. Your Steamers will be back in action again tomorrow night at 7 p.m. as they battle the Greenbrier Knights for the fourth time this season. The current record between the two stands at two and one after Eden Edenton handed Greenbrier the loss in walk-off fashion this past Friday, July 3rd. There will be no broadcast on the Edenton Steamers home channel, but we will make sure to get out any information regarding a home broadcast from the Greenbrier Knights. Broadcasts for the Steamers will pick up with Edenton's next home contest against Old Dominion once again here on Tuesday. Until then, my name is Patrick Foster. Thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's contest. Stay happy, stay healthy, and stay beautiful, Steamers Nation.